Hello everyone, it's Jonas, and since I haven't uploaded anything in a while, I thought I'd just show you what I've been up to. Um, I can't really show you all of it for various reasons, but one of the things I've been doing is experimenting with Unity and trying to create a small platformer game. Um, now, I've been following a bunch of really good uh, tutorial videos on YouTube, and I will link to them down below. But first I'll just show you what I have this for. So I have the basic model. Um, it's a double jump as well. Um, I have a sort of uh, crouch mechanic. Now obviously I'm using uh, these animations for things that they weren't intended to do. So they all look kind of silly. Um, and I have a sort of uh, dodge or such move and I will show you by not using the controls or anything. It basically just propels you in a direction you're facing. Um, then there's a sort of um, wall grab mechanic where if you just hang on to the wall uh, you glide down slowly and you can jump away from it. Um, and if you're holding down you just uh, fall at the same speed as gravity. Now um, as you can see this is buggy. Um, because the original implementation of this in the tutorial uh, only worked on uh, platforms or walls like this one that connected to the ground uh, because the only uh, stopping point was basically as you became uh, grounded, touched the ground. Uh, which means that if you uh, glided down one of these uh, you wouldn't stop uh, humping the wall um, until you actually touch the ground. Which means that if you had uh, this side here, you could go all the way down to the ground before stopping. So my fix is a bit broken. And if I do the charge move instead, you will see it's even more broken. Um, I in actually have a sort of uh, proposed solution to this. Um, obviously I will need a sort of attack as well as some enemies uh, to test this game. I think I have a sort of death thingy. Uh, it must be hidden inside the geometry over here. I think it's down here somewhere. Um, so I have deaths which basically turns ragdolls on, which is showed again in the tutorials. Um, but yeah, as I said, I will need an attack and then I will need some enemies and then I can start sort of tuning the controls and fleshing out the game because most of the core movement is working except for the wall grab. Um, I have an intended solution for this. Um, basically uh, you're ray casting uh, so shooting 10 rays along the player height to detect collision and stuff like that to the walls and what I wanted was basically um, like if um, if less than half of the rays are colliding with something, something um, you stop wall grabbing, which means that if less than player, or if less than half of the player height is uh, touching something, you will not be able to wall grab. Which means that even if you're colliding like up here, you're not wall grabbing. You should be uh, falling down basically until you're somewhere around half of the player height. Um, as well as if you're like when you touch half there it stops uh, grabbing the wall. Um, I haven't been able to figure this out because um, I'm pretty bad at programming. I only picked Unity up like two or three weeks ago and I haven't used C programming for a couple of years now. Um, so it takes a while to get back to. Um, I'm pretty happy with what I got at this moment. You can also combo the moves, um, like you can jump, uh, dodge, and then jump again. And if you watch my video on Devil May Cry, the controls are going to be much like that, where you have your jump, you have your dodge, you have your uh, jump again, and then you also have your sort of uh, air attack that brings you down towards the ground, and your uppercut that I'm not sure if I'm going to include it, but if I do, because you basically have your jump, which uh, brings you uh, up anyway. 
and if you have double jump you're not going to really need um, another uppercut um, as you can see the camera is also moving really slowly um, height wise um, because I haven't really intended the game to be um, extremely different in uh, in heights basically so this is one of the things I've been up to I have a couple of videos in the works as well um, a design of uh, Ratchet and Clank um, what's it called? Cracking Time I think um, then I also have Guacamelee and I have um, another video uh, on uh, basically recycling uh, levels for different uh, different types of gameplay basically um, so this is just a small video and thank you for watching Hello, hello. Uh, this is again Ben, and again working on a little wilderness, a, a demo of, of some new features. Um, something I, I want to kind of say though, before I get started, is an apology, sorry, for not having worked much on a little wilderness in the past, like weekish. And the reason for that, which maybe isn't a super great reason, is that about a week ago, Steam had all of the Skyrim expansions and Skyrim itself, I believe, uh, on sale for 20 bucks, and I had to get that. I, I had Skyrim, I played it months and months ago, months and months and months ago, uh, but, but I didn't have the expansion, so I got those, and that's been kind of distracting me. I can't promise it won't distract me more in, you know, the weeks to come, but uh, I, I got back on track a little bit on a little wilderness uh, in the last day or two. So, again, not as much progress as maybe I would like, Ap apologies again, but I've made some work, so so let's get into that. Uh, so I happen to know that Chemica, or however you would say that, is a good... Right now, I think this, this is random. Uh, but anyway, a good uh, demonstration. God, if I can find it. There you go. So I, I just want to reiterate, too, I haven't worked on this screen at all uh, in a long time, but eventually you're going to be able to click on names and just you know type in whatever you want. Uh, and, and, you know, not have to scroll through like this, but actually have drop-down menus. It, this will look pretty eventually, but, but for now this is suiting. This isn't the important stuff, you know. Uh, so anyway, Chemek... Che, che, how do you say it? Che, Chemekata? I don't even know. God, Oregon, it's crazy town names. I lived in Oregon for a little while. Anyway, Chemeka, etc. is great because it has clouds when it's randomly... Um, the, the names serve as seeds for the random gener generator. Um, so, so anyway, uh, Chema, etc. has good cloud cover, which is what I want to demonstrate, and which I also want to demonstrate, and has just happened, lucky me, is rain. Uh, and to be honest, it's not 100% lucky. I put in the code that it should rain much more frequently than, uh, than normal. But, uh, but this was really fast, so, or I don't know, maybe I just made the odds crazy. Anyway, it's raining, perfect. So, weather. I've been working on weather a lot. Uh, the temperatures were totally wiggity whack, I believe. Last time I demonstrated, uh, made a demo video, and also last time there was a little temperature bar here, and if you went down on the bottom here, you saw exact temperature numbers. I've taken those out just for demo purposes. I wanted to show in the video more of how it will actually look when you play, uh, but I'm going to need those graphs and exact numbers again for me later, just for you know debugging. Um, yeah, and I'm starting to realize that I'm going to need to make something to just model weather really fast, like having to wait for the game to play and make sure that weather does sensible things is not efficient. I'm going to need to make a program that just, you know, plays out 10 years using whatever math I have and showing me all these graphs and things and I can confirm that things are great and that'll be much better, uh, but, but I'm not there yet. Anyway, things are better though. Uh, the temperatures were, were getting really high during midday and it's now much more reasonable and at least in September things look pretty good, but I haven't tested other months, so, or sorry, August, it's August right now. Uh, so I've tested August and, and things are good, but, but other months, yeah, I don't know, it could be awful. Uh, so something else that I want to demonstrate, let me scroll around, 
uh, is uh, and, and get them to do things is the history log, which I think I was like I had said I was going to to show it off or had intended and completely failed to do so. Uh, so I will just get them doing a couple things. Let's and let's build a, a blueberry trellis. There we go. So once they've done a few things, and let's let them do a couple things. Oh, they're gonna take a while. Here we go. Yeah, get those blueberries. Uh, uh, you, you, you can do it. Ah, oh, he's not going to build a trellis. Anyway, we probably have some log entries. So these two buttons are new. It used to be that the only way you could pause is, pause, sorry, is to press space, and that's suboptimal because, again, I want this on touch, and that's something I really need to do at some point is make sure I can compile this, at least for Windows Phone. I happen to have a Windows Phone, and I also can't recommend Windows Phones. They're kind of not good. But uh, it's what I have, so I'm going to try and, and see if I can get this on Windows Phone at least. Um, and, and anyway, so it's going to be touchable, right? The interface has to work for touches. I've probably mentioned like a bajillion times. Uh, hey, he stopped. There's not enough wood. Anyway, so there's now buttons to pause. Uh, and there's also a button for the colony logbook. I'll probably come up with a different name later. So it shows recent things that the colonists have done. And I think last time we, we did see some of these, uh, sorry, I tapped my screen. You can't see me tap the screen. Some of these messages are, are deemed important enough that they would kind of flash up on the top. It would say, so-and-so has caught influenza, and then it would fade out, a, a flash me message sort of thing like you see on web pages. Uh, but, but most things do not, but those things do still go in the colony logbook. And there are more things I would like to log and also uh, flash at people, like like right now when this guy has aborted um, working on this house because there was no more, he couldn't find any more materials. That's an important thing we probably want to know about, right? And And this is all... I think most people who know about this game come from Dwarf Fortress because I've been posting on the Dwarf Fortress forums, and this is a very familiar thing for Dwarf Fortress, right? It's, it's got this exact sort of thing in there. Uh, another thing that I've done that you couldn't do before it used to be that when you paused, it dimmed out the whole screen and showed the logbook, so pausing in the logbook were sort of the same thing. Uh, but that was bad because I want you to be able to click around when, when you're paused and give orders. And you could do that at the time but it, it was just difficult when you had text all over, so that was ugly. And and just as kind of a touch, if you open the logbook while it's paused and unlog book, it remembers that you were paused before you, you, you know, did the logbook, and and then if you logbook when it wasn't paused, ah, see how clever. Uh, and also you can resume, you know, if you ever resume, it takes out logbook. So anyway, that's all good. I mean, it was simple, but I, it was a nice touch, so I was happy about it. I had to show it off. Uh, looks like the clouds have gone away, but it hasn't stopped raining, so we obviously have some problems there. Um, oh, no, maybe it's stopping. Oh, we don't have problems. I'm even better than I thought. So, yeah, th things are going well, slowly, because of Skyrim, uh, but well. So, no, look, it's raining again. This is madness. There's no... I can't decide. I don't even know. Anyway, <laughs> clearly there's work to be done on the weather. Uh, so, unfortunately, that's all I, I really have to show. Um... Yeah, as we can see now, it's raining again. The weather's going crazy, uh, but I've made pro Oh, well, there's clouds, so, so I guess it's okay. Um, so, more exciting weather. And the next step where I'm going next with this is the weather making them unhappy or, or happy. If it's, it's, if it's a beautiful day out, they should be like, this is great. And if it's raining and cold and awful, then that sucks and they would be unhappy. And then once that's in, having them actually take shelter. And that should be under trees when it rains, if, if that's you know, all they've got to do, or in houses, if there are houses available, uh, so, and, and then sleeping in houses, and I think once all that's done, I'm going to release this for people to play, not complete, probably not on many platforms, I, I don't think I will have, you know, gotten to any sort of mobile platform, not even Windows, by that time, that's not my pro priority, uh, my priority is to get it out there so people can try it out and give me feedback and play it themselves, even if there's not necessarily a lot to do. Uh, but I think once people are getting unhappy, maybe catching the flu, needing to eat, sleeping indoors, that's, you know, the beginnings of a real game. So, I you know, before I was saying that it would be a month, but then Skyrim happened, so I, I, I can't say. Oh, nice, he's eating. Anyway, I will end the video there. Thank you for watching. Apologies again for the... Uh, for Skyrim, and I will uh, hopefully have another update for you guys soon.
Hello, let's play test Blue Bug Bob because alliterations are always awesome. All right, I actually uh, played this earlier. Um, well, I mean, I tried to play this earlier. I was stuck at level one because the arrow keys don't work. Uh, WSD does not work. Spacebar? No. Enter. Well, okay, well, that should be a little bit clearer. I, I was like, I thought that was a game and I was trying to jump or something. Anyway. Uh, it's okay. I'm just an idiot. All right. Let's uh, move to the right. All right. There we go. All right. Now arrow keys have to move. Space to transport? No idea what that is about. Jump? <laughs> oh, that's adorable. All right. I like how this um, hit return to the toggle the info box. Okay. I like how there's a little uh, meter to show. Like flying up and falling down. That's actually pretty clever. Level two. Oh, okay, thorns, things. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's a hole in the ground. How am I supposed to get? The oh, okay. I see how to get the coin. Wait. Can I float? Oh. Okay. That's pretty. That's pretty clever. Uh. Come on. There we go. Uh. There we go. Yes. I am alive. I am very alive. I've never felt more alive in my life. Life is beautiful. I am awakened. Also, I'm a blue bug. Being blue makes it really easy for all the predators to find me. I'm also a big blue bug. And those are some... Well, I'm no longer blue. Also, I'm very dead. Okay, that was the... All right, R to reset the level. All right, it should uh, auto respawn. Yeah, the, the uh, first thing. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! Hold up, mofo's. What you trying to do? What you trying to do? What you trying at? Ah <laughs> ah uh, uh, I tried. I didn't even try that time. All right, I'm just. Dumb. Alright. Run, Bob. Blue bug, Bob. Okay. Up, 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 up. Aha. Uh. Oh god. Oh god. Haha. Uh, <laughs> like this is actually pretty fun so far. Even you know, even though it's up, uh, graphically simple and uh, you know, no music. It's I think the mechanics are, are quite are there. I mean, so far it's uh, you know pretty standard for platformer, but it I I I I, I, wa I wanted to see what's up there. Uh, okay, this is where the flying mechanics are actually going to be really tricky. All right, this, this is this is clever. I like it. All right, let's. Oh oh oh, oh no, that's actually just pretty simple. Okay, whatever. What's this? What's this? It's a leaf in the middle. What's this? What's this? There's a bug right over there. What? What's this? I'm red. I hope I am not dead. I'm gonna lose my head. I should be Danny Elfman. So what does that do exactly? Oh, I like that. All right, this game. You know, I was what I was saying earlier about. This game having pretty standard mechanics so far, that really changes it up. I like that. Let's get let's get more of them. I want to get the coin. I want the coin. Good day. I will have the coin. Oh, it's not a time-based thing. It's my flying. Right? A am I correct in believing this? If so, that is going that is going to be a really great mechanic. Lots of trade-offs between flying versus, you know, your power. All right, so it's a little bit time-based, a little bit of your flying. Interesting. Also, I can't walk through that. Come on. There we go. Wait, what? No. Why? Why did this happen to me? I made my mistakes. Shit. 
All right, all right. Come on. This time I'll just walk over there like a normal bug. Or maybe that's actually the end of the demo. Uh, let me check. Uh, currently five small levels. All right, so yeah, that that is the end of the demo. Uh, yeah, that's it's kind of a tease that you introduced the coolest mechanic in this game right in the last level, and I only got to use it at once. But I like it. I'm actually uh, looking forward to more because the whole like trade-off between uh, flying and using your powers, like making your power bar the same as your uh, flying bar, like that's a really interesting trade-off. And, you know, it's a different, it's actually quite a twist on the standard platformer where, you know, you just jump up once and you have no control over, I mean, you can, like, you jump up once and maybe you have a double jump. But here you actually have, you know, control over your, tr your double jump, triple jump, and it's all tied to the same bar. Uh, so that is really interesting. And I am looking forward to see uh, how you can expand on that mechanic. Uh, so far, uh, the art, uh, despite being minimalist, is actually pretty good. I, I have to say, like, uh, yeah. Well, I mean the in-game uh, level art. The, the menu art didn't look like a menu, and I was confused because I couldn't jump, and I, I accidentally quit the game last time uh, when I was trying to figure out the menu. But the in-game art is uh, looking really sweet. It's, it, yeah, it's very uh, sty it's minimalist, but very sty uh, stylistic. And little Bob here, little big blue Bob, Bob his name is Bob, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm not making this up, right? It's Bob. Yeah, your big blue bug, Bob. I actually don't know if no, wait, there's only three Bs in this. Anyway, the point is, um, yeah, it's a really promising game. Uh, so okay, uh, that leaf, that leaf over there needs some graphical work. But yeah, I, I I'm looking forward. Like it's actually, uh, really, the I, I think the mechanic uh, of like tying your powers and your flight to the same bar, it ha has a lot of potential, and it actually has some quite charming art so far. So I am very looking forward to see what comes next for Big Blue Bug Bob over here, who was red for a moment. For, he was momentarily red. I thought he would be dead, but instead he broke the blocks of his head, and that is the end mm, of this video. Yeah. What's going on YouTube? Welcome to my sixth devlog for my game engine. And today I'm gonna to be showing you what I did this week. The first thing I did was made it so the window now changes size with your screen. And I've also added this new main menu which moves dynamically with the size of your window. And in this main menu, you have three buttons. You have your create, load, and exit button. So let's just go ahead and create a new world. Okay, so now we're in our game, and I've made a couple changes to the way the world generates. So instead of having a bedrock level that has random heights, we now have flat bedrock. So, um, before, like, um, where my mouse is pointing, say this block right here was the first piece of bedrock, and this one was the next bedrock, and then the bedrock could go down here, and then go down here, and then go like that, you know, it would change the height of the bedrock. Well, now we have flat bedrock. And um, now we're just generating a random height for every time we create a new row. So um, this row is going to have 64 blocks, and this one was going to have 64 blocks. And then this one is going to have 63 blocks, and this one's going to have 62. And this one's going to have 60 or 61 and this is going to have 61 and so on it just keeps going with the way the trains generated so now um when you reach bedrock level it's not like some crazy um thing it's now just a flat level so now you can 
mine above bedrock without having to make a crazy looking mine, which is a nice addition. Okay, the next thing we have is saving and loading. So once we get tired of our game, um, we're just going to go ahead and mine the leaves off of this tree. Um, once we get tired of playing the game, we can hit escape and our game is going to freeze for a second and it's going to say not responding and then it's going to take us to the main menu. And now if we close out our window and then we go ahead and play it again and then hit load, you can see we now have the same world. Um, you can see this tree isn't doesn't have its leaves and um if we go ahead and mine you can see it'll save that too so if we hit escape um and then we go ahead and load you can see it saves our world now i don't have a saving yet for the player um that's why the player was spawning in midair and then falling because i do not have a way for the player to spawn or to save its inventory so the um if you exit the entire game and then load you won't have the same blocks but i will fix that next week um it's a simple fix only takes a couple minutes um and yeah so you can basically just mine your world and you can save it now and you can keep loading it and yeah it's pretty cool and um i don't know if i showed this yet but if you press r you can actually reload the game um now it's cool because if your game isn't saved it'll keep generating a random world but if your game is saved then it's just going to keep loading the last save game of that level which is cool so like say you drop like something valuable or something or your computer crashes or not necessarily that but you do something stupid or you fall off the world you can go ahead and just hit the R button and it'll spawn you in back to your last world save which is really nice so like if we go ahead and mine these blocks here and then hit R you can see those blocks will be back into the game because that it loads our last save um and yeah we can go ahead and escape and once we get to the main menu we can hit our exit button and that's pretty much the game now i have done a couple other things um besides that a lot of my work this week has gone into rearranging and redoing the way you gather materials so now i have arrays instead of having an individual variable for each type of block so um now it's easier to load the maps it's quicker and a lot easier to when i want to add blocks and stuff um so like all i have to do is inside of my init method um i just have to set all these variables to what i want them to and then um a couple of them i have to set up here and that's it then I have a new block and it automatically goes into the inventory and it automatically goes into the little um, scroll wheel thing we have up here um, and as you can see I actually did I added every block so now you have wood planks leaves grass dirt and stone um, and planks you cannot actually access right now um, that is going to be accessible once you get um crafting into the game which i have not added yet um and i have redid the placeholder for the inventory um so now it's this really bad blurry image um but that is temporary and these buttons down here don't do anything and i am removing them because i thought of a new way um so the way the inventory is going to work in the future is each row of these slots right here is going to contain a different um like item group so like this first row like right here will have like all of the building blocks like dirt stone the different ores and leaves and stuff kind of like how 
Minecraft has the different um, tabs in creative. Um, and then the second row will have like your tools and stuff. And then you'll have like your food. And then just like um, misc, misc stuff. I don't really know how to pronounce the word. So I say misc. <coughs> um, and yeah. And I'm, I'm going to change this image back or I'm gonna like get rid of this crap down here and just have a row of stuff that you can craft so like it'll have five panels and you can click the next buttons and you can see which ones you can craft because they'll either have a green hint or a red hint based on whether or not you can craft them and yeah it'll be pretty cool um in the future that's probably what I'm gonna be doing next week and of course there was the other things I was going to do um like I'm going to fix some of the saving because when you save it doesn't save the materials or the position of your player and stuff and I'm just going to be doing a lot of fixes and stuff and I think our next update is going to be one of the biggest updates that I've had um so that's pretty much it for this video um, there wasn't a whole lot that I did. A lot of it was code organizing, and, um, yeah, that was pretty much all I've done, was a lot of code organizing. But, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, see you next week.